uh, if you kind of look at how we're educated about money, most of our kids uh, don't grow up knowing how to develop an economic institution. More of our kids know how to create a church or a football team than they know about how to create a business. So uh, that's why you have uh, mega churches, because we know how to make churches. That's why you have uh, peewee football leagues all throughout the United States and black neighborhoods everywhere with thousands of black coaches everywhere, because we know how to run a football team, right? Uh, but you do not have uh, mega businesses everywhere because of the only thing we know about business is that a business can give you a job, right? That's the only thing that we kind of understand. And, uh, and so I, I would all argue that in, if we were to make that transition and start creating mega businesses, then we have to do the obvious, which is to train our children at an early age or put them in spaces at an early age that will train them on how to develop economic engines, economic institutions. Well, somebody else also asked, you know, why don't we have mega schools? Well, the reason we don't have mega schools is because uh, we don't know much about education. Uh, we pretty much learn from white liberals, white liberals, who, those people who pretend to be your friends, the Ed Bucks of the world. We learn from the, the Ed Buck supporters that, remember, Ed Buck is the, 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 the liberal guy, the, the, head, the, the donor in the Democratic Party who killed those black men, right? Or where the black men just mysteriously ended up dead in his apartment after he injected them with crystal meth. It, I don't know why you don't call that killing somebody, but whatever. Um, uh, you know, we learn from them that education is something that we really shouldn't, we shouldn't think much about in terms of doing it for ourselves. Uh, we were told that education is something that uh, white people give you, that good white people will give you an education. So uh, when you start waking up and you start saying, well, maybe we need our own schools. Well, a lot of times for many years, there was a black leader, some civil rights leader, somebody who marched with Dr. King, who was telling you uh, that you should just, you should just forget the charter schools. The charter schools are all run by these racist Republicans. Uh, whatever, and you should wait for the public schools to get better. We should vote for Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, whoever the the white Democrat was they put in your face, or Barack Obama, you know, other, all these other white people, and put you know, whoever they put in front of your face and vote for them, and they're going to make your schools better. And every single time you voted for them, and they not only didn't make your schools better, but your schools continued to push you down the pathway toward extreme miseducation. So uh, you think you're disadvantaged when you don't get the education, which you, you are, but you're even more disadvantaged when you do get the education, because not only is, is it a, a racist education, but it's the wrong education. It's the wrong education, right? So uh, effectively, we don't know much about creating mega schools because our relationship with education is very limited. We don't think about education in terms of being the creators and founders of schools. We think about education in, in terms of either being the student in a school that people are making money from or the teacher or administrator in a school that's owned and built by somebody else. We have a lot of black folks who are very smart who become teachers and they look for a school, typically a white owned school, to give them money to go teach in that school. Um, I knew a black woman in Chicago who had a PhD in education from an elite university and she um, what I was talking to her, I said, wow, you're really highly trained. You know, why don't you go start a school for black children? She said, well, I'm looking for a job. I said, well, what, okay, well, how's that going? She said, I can't find one. And I said, okay, well, maybe you should create your own school. No, I'm going to keep looking for a job. Okay, well, keep, you know, okay, that sounds good. So she finds a job, right? So she calls me. She says, hey, boys, I found a job. I'm working with these black children and I love it. And I said, really? That's great. And I said, are there other black teachers? And she said, no, I'm the only black teacher, but all these black babies need me and I love it and I love it and I love it, right? And, uh, and I'm like, I'm so happy for you. That's really great. This white, this white people thing is really working out for you. Huh? It didn't, didn't work out for me, but I hope, good, I'm cheering for you, girl. I'm rooting for you, right? So then about uh, four weeks in, she calls me and she says, uh, Boyce, um, she answers, I, I answer the phone. She sounds sad. I say, you sound sad. What's going on? She said, Boyce, they, they came to my office and they fired me. And I said, they fired you? What, what? I thought that y'all, I thought it was working out. I thought y'all were like, you know, like chief and great. I thought you, you know, they helped you believe you could fly. You know, like, all right, I believe I can fly, right? I thought maybe it was going good. And they're like, and she was like, boys, oh, it was so insulting. They came in my office and they fired me on the same day. Didn't even give me any warning or anything. And I had formed attachments to these kids and, and I wanted them. I wanted them to do well and I was really helping them. And I was the only person that cared about them. And I said, yeah, but the problem is that, that those were not your kids. Not only were they not your babies, period, but they were not, that's not your school. You were a babysitter. Like you were, 
you know, that's kind of what you are. I mean, I'm not dissing, I'm not attacking you for this. I think I understand it. I fell for the same stuff, you know, back in the day. But those are not your, that's not your school. That that's the white people's school. They they run that plantation. And they're the ones who are positioning these babies in this school where they're sucking in black children so they can get millions of dollars in government money. They just hired you because they needed somebody who could relate to the cattle that they were herding through the farm. And when you started getting extra black on them, that's when they realized that you were going to be a problem and they had to let you go. And you were powerless to stop that. I said, now, I hate the fact that you you have to, that you seem to think I'm talking down on you by telling you that you can go out and create your own school, but I'm not talking down on you. I'm talking to you like a brother or a father would. I'm saying to you, you probably have more education than all those white people in that school put together. You have a doctorate in education. My God, you don't get any more prepared than that. What, you know, why can't you, if we, if we had former slaves 100 years ago educating black children in their houses, why can't you, with a PhD, educate black children and just find the space to do it and go and find some parents that will trust you to educate their babies? I know personally, I would not care if you were educating kids in a, in a room that was two by four. If, if I know that you're doing a good job, if you're doing a Marva Collins type situation for my kids, I'm going to send my kids to you before I send them to some big white fancy school that's going to brainwash and destroy them and humiliate them and make them feel like they're less than. So I said, look, I'm not going to you know, be mean to you or nothing like that, but I was going to tell you, you know, you're going to go through this for the rest of your career, for the rest of your career. So basically, that's why we don't have mega schools, because we got mega educated Negroes. We got Negroes that went to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Duke University, Wisconsin, right? Ivy Tech. Wherever, wherever the hell you went to school, we, we got black people that got mega education, but don't know nothing about creating nobody's institutions. We got Negroes with more education than you can count. More letters behind, so many letters behind their name, they use the whole alphabet twice. And they will tell you, my name is John Smith, ABD, CPA, MBA, PhD, JD, MD, WD, ABCD, one, two, three, right? They'll, they'll tell you all the letters behind their name, but can't build shit can't build nothing. You got a hammer and a nail and don't even know how to build a house. All you know how to do is look for nails to hammer. You're looking for people that already own a house so they can hire you to hammer their nails, right? <laughs> Give me, I need something. I need something to hammer. I, I know I'm an expert at hammering. The problem is that that's, that it doesn't, I mean, maybe that works for some white people because they've got other white people who built institutions for them that allow them to come in and specialize in that way. You don't have that. And, and, and what the liberals do to you, this is why I don't, I can't stand the liberals, but I don't like the conservatives either. So I guess I'm just stuck, I'm a political orphan. The liberals fooled you into making you think that you were white. Like they made you really think you that this is this being white shit was really gonna work for you. So a lot of y'all end up like my friend did. When you get in there and you start getting all comfortable and you start really thinking that this is your space, this is your calling. Oh, my God, I was born to play for the Dallas Cowboys. I was born to do this. Next thing you know, that Jerry Jones cut you, the Cowboys cut you from the roster and you don't know what to do with yourself. You're like, oh, God, I, I, I don't know what to do when I'm not playing football. What am I going to do? Well, you know, there's some there's some value to knowing how to create your own situation. 